middle to come with you, help set up, say, Reese Robbins on the right side if you want it. Jasmine Robinson. Swing from the back for Anna DeBeer, point Louisville. That's a silly good swing right there, Bailey. I mean, that's a complete, completely busted offensive possession. And De Beer is probably 14 feet off, and that kind of reaches back and chops it across her body to deep zone one, gets the kill. Pierce. Charity Looper. Well, it will be a huge challenge for Virginia Tech today. SWB audio captured, not registered. Looper right there, I mean, that's straight off the top of the block. She can go OTT, she can go over the top if she wants against Virginia Tech here. Be interested to see if she keeps trying to exploit the deep swings. Well, Charity Looper, the transfer from UCLA, has made a great impact since she made that decision to transfer, transfer to Louisville and into the ACC. Last year was all ACC first team. And I think here for Virginia Tech, you're going to see almost every rotation, pretty much every rotation for Louisville will be Scott, DeBeer, and Looper receiving. We see it right now for them. If you're Virginia Tech, who do you serve? I, I'm not serving DeBeer, and I'm not serving Scott. So looking to put every ball in Looper if you can. Force her to carry the load on receive. Freshman Ella Gilfoy. Looper smacks it down. The dig from the freshman. Robbins gets it back, though, for the Cardinals. It's tough. That's your strategy. Exactly what Virginia Tech did. They went after Looper and serve receive. But she's also a good passer <laughs> in transition here. Reese Robbins, that's essentially one-on-one, -on -one, kind of one-on-one -on -one and a half there. Just kind of swings in the seam. She's able to because on the free ball, Louisville's able to hold middle blocker Jordan Holman. Quickly blocked by Hallman, or Hallman on the swing, and Louisville able to jump up to a 6-3 lead, make it 7-3. And Hannah Sherman, good move there in the middle. It's not a huge block, but it's low and tight, and so if she makes the mistake of hitting into your block, she's gonna pay for it. And an ace for Cabello. Different SWB audio capture not Saturday, registered. Right back defense serving from the left side of the court. Why do you think they make that decision? Uh, I think that five, zone five to zone five, that cross court serve is very effective here against Bell Patrick. That's what they're looking for. It's not too big of a deal for her to run right back. Haley Pierce housed on the block. That's Sherman and Looper. So you see here for Virginia Tech, it's Leandro Manguel Duran. Cates and then Bell Patrick. They're going to uh, now they're dropping Haley Pearson to serve receive here. They've moved pa Bell Patrick out of the passing rotation. See how that changes Cabello here. Pierce. Yeah, that's right a good change. Handed swing. Yep. And with a change, Hokey side out. So you move so that moves your Libero into the middle of the court. Sierra Kate sticks a perfect pass there, takes Bell Patrick away as a serving option. Bayo, and it appear a bit low, point Hokies. Yeah, they never cleared, never cleared the tape for Anna DeBeer. Sophomore from North Carolina ready to serve for the Hokies. That dropped in, what a serve it was for Haley Pierce. Really, again, attacking Charity Looper here. Looper knows it's coming, too. She knows she's going to be the serving target today. You want to see Elena Scott be able to get a little bit more involved, try and take anything in that kind of area right there. After the ace, a service error. I don't mind that miss, Bailey. I really don't. Um, I think you need to execute a little bit better if you're Haley Pierce. You'll take an ace and an error. Uh, you actually got two points on that. You had the hitting error from De Beer and then the ace. SWB audio captured, not registered. To be in this match. You're willing to accept some errors to get the level of serving you need. 
Tough choice there from Mangle Duran. That ball looked like it was flying out, and instead it ends up being an ace. So one of the areas where Looper, a phenomenal athlete, high leaper, one of the areas where that translates well or impacts is look how high she contacts this jump float serve. Even a 5'9", able to drive it down to the court. Lands in for the Hokies. Aisha Carrick on the two ball up the middle. That's been a really effective uh, play set for Virginia Tech when they set that two. They run Hallman on the slide behind the setter and bring whoever the right side hitter is up the middle. Carrick hits that well. De Beer, too much. Point for Tech. What happens sometimes is when you're playing against people who attack the ball from a high point, De Beer, Charity Looper, Cressy, you want to reach up to go touch the ball. That's flying in the air. Maldonado Diaz. It seemed like she just floated in the air for about three seconds. Yeah, she almost hit that on her way down here. Kind of a high two ball. Oh, I'm a little early. She jumps high enough. She's able, able to still get good contact, reach as well, turns that to zone one. But say on the block, you, you want to stay low and disciplined against the Louisville team. If they're going to hit over you, let them hit over you. What you don't want to do is jump in the net. You don't want to give them more block to use. The beer found the middle. Hokie swatting the ball around and lend the ball on the other side of the court. Mm. Blocked and out of play. So a solid effort for the Hokies defensively there, but Kong comes up with a kill. And Anna DeBeer hitting a roll shot. It wasn't a great dig, ended up having to send a free ball and losing the point then, but DeBeer hitting roll shots. SWB audio capture, not that. registered. Her taking full swings. And just landed in. Hokies a bit frustrated with that. Do they want to challenge? I don't think they're going uh, to. Not going to. Tran serving for Louisville now. Big swing, Maldonado Diaz. Scott to Beer with a right hand. Way too much, and the Hokies are gifted a point. A couple hitting errors early here for Anna DeBeer. And what do you think she's missing the mark here? Uh, sometimes it takes time to settle into a match. Uh, I've got a lot of faith that she'll find it. But Virginia Tech has to take advantage of that now. Perfectly set up for Kong, and that'll bring us to a break. Louisville looking good so far in set number one, up 15 to nine. He's here today. It's the part of that Commonwealth of Virginia road trip. Got, took care of business in Charlottesville against Virginia. Trying to do the same here today in Blacksburg before facing off against Pitt on Wednesday. That'll be on the ACC Network. Out point Hokies. Cabello taking a swing there from the setting position out of the back row after getting the dig. Ronaldo Diaz goes to the sideline. Victoria Walgren checking in for Virginia Tech. I think one of the highlight, you know, one of the things that it's been very clear the last couple years as the elite teams in the ACC, especially Pitt and Louisville. SWB audio capture, not know. registered. They really very rarely have a trap match, have a trap game on the road. You know, they tend to take care of business and come in pretty well focused. Uh, Pitt this year a little bit, had a little bit of a, of a bobble against Virginia Tech. In that match, they were resting people. Here we're getting the, the normal lineup for Louisville. That was a bit of an interesting choice in that pit matchup. And you're absolutely right when we come prepped. And there was a good amount of players that we expected to see that this got the rest for that game. Panthers ended up winning three sets to none. But they had to they had to break the glass on Valeria Vasquez right. Gomez. They had to go to her down, what, 20 to 15 in the third? And they come back and win 25-22, if I recall. The Rachel Fairbanks sat the whole match. Uh, I think Louisville looks pretty well dialed in today. And look for this serve to go to Looper. 
Got to serve tougher than that. Swung down and bounces away for a Louisville point. You might as you might as well knock it in underhand at that point. You have to serve tougher. Looper is the the weakest of the three receivers in that rotation for Louisville. You still have to serve tough. I mean, she handled that like it was a coach serving in warmups. Lena Scott, good serve. Haley Pierce, way too far. Full swing there from Pierce on kind of a tough set. It's a little bit inside, a little bit tight. She's trying to avoid the block. Can't keep it in the court. Timeout called by Marcy Byers. So Louisville up seven. So you think Wednesday is going to be a big matchup for Panthers, Cardinals. Going to be thousands of people there. What do you think if Louisville is going to get revenge on the Panthers here in that matchup? What do you think they need to do? SWB audio captured, uh, not registered. To, you're, as you're always going to say, you want to get them out of system. You want to get in system yourself. But I think you have to figure out where are the weak points with the Panthers line up. And I think it's at the second middle spot uh, with, with Rilo Jones, and then I think it's the second outside spot. It's been Valeria Vasquez Gomez for years. Can you go after her and make her carry? Because Stafford on the left is going to get hers. Olivia Babcock, I think, is going to be National Player of the Year on the right side. Uh, can you make their not stars be big contributors? Because the stars are going to be pretty tough to stop. It's such an interesting week for Louisville, and we can say the same thing about Pitt because. Louisville has Pitt on Wednesday, then they got to go on the road to take on Stanford in the next game. Yeah, you know, that's tough, but you are, you know, you're flying charter. You're, okay. you're flying comfortable. <laughs> you're not getting on Delta, you know, like to go out there. Take a look at that, though. How many people going to these big time matches? It's, it's a lot of fun. And I, if you had told me. You know, 10 years ago, the only people who were really doing it was, was Nebraska. It was putting a lot of people in the stands. Occasionally one-off matches here and there, but it's been all over the country the last couple of seasons. And I think it's justification. The Louisville's been playing in the Young Center, sometimes full-time, sometimes part-time for years since they built the thing. But I think it's allowing a lot of coaches and programs to see Bell Patrick with a big swing to the deep corner. I think it's allowing a lot of coaches going to their athletic directors and their leadership and saying, yo, let's, let's put the resources into, into playing in, a, in a, our big arena, and can we fill the place? This is a nice, high, hard swing off the top of the block from Patrick. Hits that deep corner. You hit it there, Bailey, you're going to win. I think we'll see sellouts again for the, the national semifinals, and I think we're going to see big crowds throughout the NCAA tournament, too. How about that play, Jake? SWB audio captured, not screen. registered. Got the kill on the next one. That is a lot harder to do than it looks, um, to be able to reset yourself and still take that, that, that good swing. That second jump ability. I never had it. <laughs> one jump, if that. Freshman Cabello serves. Pierce. The beer got a hand on it, bounces away, and Haley Pierce has another kill for the Hokies, now has three. Charity Looper's blocking hard line on that swing. Sherman gets there too, but they're leaving Pierce cross court. I, again, I, she hasn't hit a ton of right side this year, and we've probably seen her more than Louisville seen her. But I'd see if she can swing down the line first. Make her hit that shot rather than giving her that comfortable cross court swing. Second service error for Haley Pierce. Now Louisville is just five away from confidently taking set number one. Haven't, haven't seen Virginia Tech really stress Louisville in serve receive yet. Been pretty comfortable side out. Once you get up four, five, six points, you're a lot of teams are just happy to side out back and forth to win. Deleski. Bell Patrick, she's blocked, but it lands out of play. Well, Bell Patrick has shown a lot of potential in her opening year at Virginia Tech. We have focused a good amount of this, of this broadcast narrative on Louisville's upcoming week, but for Virginia Tech, just trying to close out the year on a strong note. You've got some opportunities to win. You got an opportunity today to, to you know, try and book an upset or at least get a great match against a great team. 
Uh, there's a lot, of, lot to be learned from every match. And you know, SWB you know, audio capture not registered. Trying to get better. I mean, it's it it's nobody wants to be one in sixteen in the conference right before Thanksgiving. But a lot of progress comes from you know, are you going to keep doing the work? Are you going to keep committing to it? So there's a lot to be gained from these last couple weeks. All doesn't go over the net. Hokies with Notre Dame on Wednesday and then Syracuse on Friday. Notre Dame, Hokies just took them five sets. That'll be a trip to South Bend. Then Syracuse on Black Friday. This is our last one of the year, Bailey. Yeah. Well, it's been fun. It's been a big weekend here at Castle between the volleyball game on Friday and women's basketball game yesterday and uh, closing out the weekend with a volleyball matchup against the number three team in the country. Patrick on the pipe here. You know, the one thing I'd say about Louisville thus far, I mean, they're up 22 15 here, but they haven't looked super sharp defensively. There's some digs I would expect them to make that haven't been handled. Pong was there on the block. Hokies reset. Mangle Duran. Big swing on the edge, and it bounces away. Point Louisville for Alana Bankston. Peyton Peterson, Alana Bankston getting some playing time here at the end of the first set. Be interested to see if, you know, assuming Louisville closes this out comfortably, if we're going to even see De Beer or Looper the rest of the way. Bankston, Woo. right hand hits off of the head of Deleski. And now here SWB comes audio point. capture That's not registered. Shot. Bankston, kind of on her way down on the out of system set, just chops that down the line. Worst case scenario, the setter digs it and they're out of system. Good serve. Able to ran swings right hand. And Scott is there. Oh, that's an awesome set. Lena Scott with a great bump set. Cates twirling to the floor to keep the ball alive. Leandro Mangle to ran. Scott with a right arm swing, and the ball falls out of play. Good efforts there, but it's a Hokies point. Lena Scott, who leads the ACC in digs per set. Second team All-American from a season ago. And 23 digs, back-to-back -back games in the last two wins for Louisville against Virginia and North Carolina. Bankston, now it's over here in... Uh, which, those are the tough matches, like that's... You talk to anybody who's coaching the Final Four, I never had the pleasure, but you know, you talk to anybody who's coaching the Final Four, basketball and volleyball, that that Elite Eight, that regional final, <laughs> that's the scary one. Uh, that's the one where your season kind of can can be a, an incredible accomplishment or a huge disappointment based on how that goes. Well, just adding more implications to that match on Wednesday. Not only trying to hang a banner for an ACC title, but potentially trying to be a top seed as Robin slams one down to the floor here in Castle. Uh, Anna DeBeer and Charity Looper back in to start set two. Got a little bit of a rest, end of set one. Kara Cressy we have not seen. I have to assume that she's getting a break today. Pierce block, Patrick going up, and Kong gives the Hokies a gift. There was no one on the left side of the floor, but she just missed the mark. Yeah, I like it though. Take the swing. If she miss hits it, she's usually good for something like that. It's a good scramble and cover. Kong just sprays it wide. Her eyes probably as big as dinner plates on that one. <laughs> you only get so many open net swings in your life, Bailey. It's a limited number. SWB audio capture not Here. registered. Ready to take a swing. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how many of those uh, open, open swings that will happen. Do you think there will be any that happen on Wednesday? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> that's going to be a, that's, I'm, 
guessing that's going to be a tight and nervous and maybe a little, little bit of sloppy affair, defensive, you know, defensive match. Pitt and Louisville went five at Pitt in a Panthers victory. Should be a lot of fun. Also, P.K. Kong has some fantastic shoes on tonight. Just Elena. Elena Scott with the kill to the corner on the set over. Catches Virginia Tech asleep there with nobody, nobody looking for the free ball. So Kong goes to the sideline. Elena Scott with 29 aces on the season. Just her third kill of the season, though. Wow. I'm not sure it's going to go in the stat book that way. Yes, it did. Third kill on the year for Elena Scott. You don't get a lot of opportunities. One of the best to do it in the country, Elena Scott. Uh, for my mind, it's it's 1A and 1B between her and Lexi Rodriguez at Nebraska. So Louisville, you take a look at that, 24 and three on the year, just the one loss in ACC play to Pitt. Elena Scott, what a career she's had at Louisville. A team that has only lost a couple of matches this year to Penn State and Nebraska, the other two that were not Pitt. As Elena Scott put that on the side of the net, it's in service error. Here are the Hokies. SWB audio Pierce. capture, Billy not Jones registered. Yay has a, a National Libra of the Year. It's kind of crazy that there is, or, or National Defensive Player of the Year, I think would be a, a really nice award. Yeah, what, what's taking, why wouldn't they do that? I don't know, I'm not, I'm not an <laughs> ABCA member anymore. And they wouldn't listen to me. I was on the awards committee a long time ago, but Elena Scott, just a fantastic career. Long history of great defensive players at University of Louisville. Up 6-3, Cabello to serve. Daleski. Looper, mm. pushing the ball down for Louisville. Elena Scott, long history of fantastic defensive players and all-around players out of the Kiva Volleyball Club in Louisville. Now, if you're Danny Busboom Kelly, it doesn't sound like you have to go very far to find talent you want on your team. No, there's there's an army of there's an army of top-level setters. Top level Liberos, top level ball control outsides, all around outside, six rotation players coming out of Louisville every year. And, you know, there's been a, a pipeline. Oh, that's an ace right there for Bell Patrick. It's been a pipeline of Kiva and, you know, Mercy High School and Assumption High School to University of Louisville for decades. Meanwhile, Louisville let that drop in. Charity Loopers looked like she wanted another look at it, but didn't argue it for long. Sherman quickly blocked. Hokies getting a few points in a row here. Another look at this ace from Bell Patrick right before that block we just saw. SWB audio that's, capture, not registered. That's, that's, that's hard to see. That's right at the referee's feet, though, or right line judge's feet. Bell Patrick going to a jump float after being kind of a standing float serve for the last several matches. Aimed at that corner again, missed the mark that time. Louisville goes back up by two. Big swing, blocked down, but on the Louisville side of the net. Here's Sierra Cates. Sherman. Mangle to Ran. Boy, Louisville is letting Virginia Tech climb back into this one. It's all tied up at 8-8. Alice Cabello goes in. She starts charging into the, you know, almost into the court, not just forward for that tip. It's moving into the middle of the court, which is where 
Manuel Duran was looking to, to tip it, but it goes off the block and catches Cabello just leaning the wrong way. Manuel Duran swatted over. Carrick now down the line and in play. Yeah, no, they say off of the hands of Louisville, so the Hokies take the lead. Yeah, DeBeer just told her, just told her teammates she said she touched it. Everybody was, everyone thought it was a, looking for DeBeer on the outside. Oh yeah, see it right there. It's great work by our camera crew. Well, rally ends for Virginia Tech. Look, I, uh, that's a very aggressive serve from Sierra Cates. I, I like it. I think it's the right choice. Rather see missing that by a foot or two and the ones that go SWB in SWB audio capture, not registered. But Lou was going to handle easily. It's a high variance strategy, but I think it's the right one. Shran. Maldonado Diaz now. Patrick with a punch. Cabello for De Beer. Cardinals recover. Right handed swing too low. Leandro Manguel Duran. A Schrand again, sophomore from Villa Hills, Kentucky. DeBeer. DeBeer has struggled at times here today so far, Jake. I'll say, Bailey, that's her fourth hitting error already in this match. And she's coming out. Peyton Peterson. Placing Louisville's All-American left side hitter. But De Beer, I mean, one kill, four errors on seven swings. Yeah, negative 429. I think that, you know, Anna De Beer is a superstar. But, oh, and here's Peyton Peterson aced right here, her replacement. But I think you have to have some accountability with your players, right? Like, hey, like, we can't leave the stars in if they're not playing well just because they're stars. Another ace for Virginia Tech. Back at Peterson. Leonardo Diaz. I see if Danny Busmoon Kelly wants to call a timeout here soon. And she will. Timeout. We saw Bell Patrick a few nights ago against Notre Dame. Really the energy giver against the Fighting Irish. Had 13 kills and what ended up being a bit of a heartbreaking loss for the Hokies. But Louisville right out of the timeout. Scores there to bring it down to a one-point lead. Maldonado Diaz, the senior from Mexico. SWB audio capture, not registered. Angle to Rand, blocked. Robinson tries this time. Swing from Peterson. Hokies trying to track it down, and they can't, so now it's all tied up. Pierce got caught on the switch there. So Jasmine Robinson ended up being all alone as the only blocker against Peterson. That's not what you want. Ace. So right out of the timeout, three straight for Louisville. It's a tough float serve, but if you're passive, if you wait for it to get to you, it's gonna move, it's gonna move and do some things you don't like. I think you need to be more aggressive if you're if you're Manguel Duran there. Go attack and serve receive rather than being reactive. Robinson, she's blocked. Swatted over Peterson. You gotta kill it or keep it there if you're Peyton Peterson. Manguel Duran goes cross court. Kong. Same thing, kill it or keep it. This time, Kong gets a swing. Haley Pierce tries to end it and does. No dig available for Charity Looper. Point Hokies. Good high swing. That's an excellent block touch. Haley Pierce gets a big hole in the block and exploits it. So the Hokies side out. 
Bailey, what I mean by what I mean by kill it or keep it is on those those plays in the net, either put it away or pass it so your team can actually get an attack. It's instances from both teams. Woo! Uh, instances from both teams just kind of softly sending it back on an overpass. It's like you got to kill it. SWB audio capture not registered. Peterson going hard cross court. I think Sierra Cates has caught it behind the block a little bit there. You want to stay outside that middle blocker's shoulder and trust your block. Whoa. Great block there from P.K. Kong. Big solo in the middle. P.K. Kong has been... Big star for Louisville here today with the struggles of Anna DeBeer and sort of a quiet afternoon for Looper. For Kong, five kills. It's now two blocks. Oh, Patrick. Well, she hit that hard, but he went through warm ups to me that, you know, without knowing for sure, that seems like she's getting a rest. Save the legs. Pierce swings off the block. But then. On volleyball, everyone always asks, like, oh, why do they all, why do the players stand at the end of the bench? I have no idea. <laughs> no clue. So when someone, if Kara Cressy's getting a rest, or you come out because you need a break or whatever it is, you're still standing. It's not like you're sitting on the bench. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm fine with it. I don't think it's bad or wrong or whatever it is. Like, you to, I'd rather move around myself than sit down. I don't know how basketball players, like, sit down for 10 minutes and then get up and play. But... Well, it's, a, it's a bit different than soccer as well because if you watch international soccer and you look at, you know, Cristiano Ronaldo on the sideline, he's in one of those regal cinemas chairs on the sideline. Just chilling. <laughs> 17-14. Hokies looking for a huge upset. Another solid point, you know, Jake, there's so much dancing. I mean, after aces, sometimes teams are taking cartwheels. You can't really do that if you're sitting down. This is true. Guilfoy jogs off, so does Jasmine Robinson. It's the volleyball equivalent of the guys waving towels on the on the bench. <laughs> <laughs> Remember how Monmouth was, it was Monmouth men's basketball? Yeah. That was their thing? Oh, Patrick, dug out by Peterson. Scott saves it. SWB audio capture, not there. registered. For Charity Looper. Yeah, Bill Patrick one-on-one. -on -one. Dug pretty well by Elena Scott. And then Looper just chops one through the block. Takes advantage of an undisciplined Virginia Tech block. Haley Pierce. Off speed, a good decision to do so to side out for Virginia Tech. Tell you what, you don't get too many tip kills on Elena Scott. I don't think she's going to fall for that one again. That time they gave Pierce a little bit of line. So Scott had to stay deep in dig line. Dirty Looper blocked. Not that time. Point Louisville. Looper just goes over the top. Watch this. I mean, that's just straight over Victoria Walgren. There's nothing you can do about that as a blocker. You're not going to suddenly grow six inches or start jumping six inches higher. You just got to hope Looper doesn't get in a rhythm. Her ability... Uh, Big leaper. I mean, she's got to be up around that 10 6, 10 7, 10 8 approach touch. But her ability to move the ball left and right down the line, make good contact. Her hand on ball skill is fantastic. Jordan Holman with a quick kill. That's where Holman's most effective is on that 31, on that quick. I'd like to see them force the ball to her more. She's efficient. She tends to be pretty available, too. She works hard in transition to be available for a quick set. You can need to feed your middles. Gillespie sets. Angle Duran with a swing. SWB audio capture, not registered. Diaz and into the stands. That's Maldonado Diaz hitting on the left side in that rotation because it was rotation one. Looper just stayed on the right, stayed to block. Sometimes if you have the players that can do it, it's just easy. It's easier than just switching. You know, switching can sometimes get caught up and 
out of position. I think you're a more effective blocking team if you stay in that rotation. Block and it drops home for Virginia Tech. Hallman working. It's not pretty, the footwork's not great, but she keeps fighting for it, gets there, closes, and gets rewarded with the block. Peterson goes against the block this time. It doesn't work out for Virginia Tech. 21-17. I think, I, I think sometimes with young players, Bailey, coaches get really worked up about the right footwork every time, blocking, and, and you know, and yes, you have to have the right patterns. You have to have multiple ways to move both to your left and to your right. But there is no replacement for someone having will. You know what I mean? Like the, the desire and the will to go go get the ball, go close the block. It's going to be off the antenna, yeah. I, I, thought, I thought it was initially the line judge didn't have it. This is going to be, I think they're going to talk about this one. All right, so that's a, it's going to be an inadvertent whistle is what this is. So a replay. Yeah. So Rob Boggs says, I think I read his lips, he said, my bad. I think he got I think he got confused by the ball hitting the tape right next to the antenna. That caused the pin to move. The line judge was all over it. That's a pretty, line judges get really, really excited to to call <laughs> the ball out off the antenna because you get the SWV point. SWV audio <laughs> capture, not so registered. They don't usually miss them. Easy call there on the ace. Aiden Tran, just three away. Nick's off of the tape. Daleski recovers, but the block is there. Well done by Bell Patrick to get to that ball off the tape. A little surprised we're not seeing a timeout here, down 23-17 from Marcy Byers. But PK Kong was all over that quick set. Carrick, set point coming up for Louisville. And no, off of the hands of the Cardinals. No argument from Louisville there. I think that's Peyton Peterson. Got a piece of it. Ooh. Louisville came to make the double sub, but they were one rotation early. And I'm wondering if they aren't going to catch themselves a team delay here, because if you come into the if you come into the sub zone, I didn't know if they made it all the way to the sub zone or not, but if you come into the sub zone and then refuse the sub, that should be a team delay. Doesn't mean much. It would, you'd have to do it again in order for it to be a penalty point later in the match. Nope. Guess not. But now everybody knows about team delay. I was about to say my next question was like, what happens? And yeah. it just has to happen twice. What happens is they show you a yellow card and tell you not to do it again. Mm. Point Hokies. Haley Pierce, that is her seventh kill. SWB audio capture, not registered. Off, off the, the set in the Libero, Sierra Cates. Set point for the Cardinals. Watch Haley Pierce up the middle on a two ball here in this rotation. That's a really good set. Pierce blocked. Auburn sets. Kong was there. Hokies recover. Bell Patrick. Here comes Peterson. Cates trying to track it down and the Hokies Run out of space. 25-19, Louisville goes up two sets to none. We'll take a break here in ACC in blocks per set. Lena Scott leads the ACC in digs per set. I'll tell you what, I, I would like to know the last time Anna DePierre was, got benched in her career.
because I, I, I really like to know the last time she got put on the bench because she wasn't playing well. Because it, it and I cannot imagine it happens very often, especially in a career where she's a two-time All-American. Would have been three if she didn't have to miss half of the season a few years ago due to injury. Just her ability to come back that year in 2022 to play back row in the last half, last part of the season. That was remarkable. After Leandra Mangwell Duran celebrating her senior day after the match. Charity Looper, cross court, yeah. kill for Louisville. That's how, you, that's how you hit that shot. You know, it's by going up and getting way on top of it when you turn hard cross court because you're, you're working with only about 31, 32 feet of space there. SWB audio capture, not registered. Pythagorean theorem. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I haven't thought about it in a while. <laughs> So we're making, we're making every, every, time you, every time you hit a volleyball from the left side, really from any position, you're, you're creating a lot of right triangles. Robbins. Point Louisville. Reese Robbins now. That's her fourth kill. Got two blocks on the day as well. Look at that, 30 total kills for Louisville in this one. On the first set, 25-16, Virginia Tech led in set two, but then Louisville ended up winning 25-19. Hokies get a point back, though. It's a sneaky shot from Haley Pierce. Puts it on the far sideline, inside the block. Glock isn't able to come get it. She reads it. It's a long way to go for a right back to make that play. Block, swing from Cressy. A defensive effort for Virginia Tech to keep it up. Cressy again, she's blocked. Looper left hand. Pierce, blocked. Still alive for Virginia Tech. Robbins ends that. Cressy just takes up. She just, it's an entirely different amount of airspace that she occupies. You know, it's six foot six and very skilled blocker, good attacker, leads the team in hitting percentage. Coming One, up for a four block performance against UVA as well. SWB audio blocking capture, not seven. registered. Pretty good. There are a lot of teams in Division One that don't average that. Cardinals somehow send the ball over the net. Virginia Tech wanted a lift there. I think they had a case for it, too. On Maldonado Diaz's second contact. Looper drops. Walgren there. Pierce. Is that in? It is not, but let's see. Is that a challengeable effort for Virginia Tech on yeah, the lift? Is it, is it close enough? Uh, no, it is not reviewable. And I think both officials were screened. But Maldonado Diaz almost played it with an open, open underhand there. Boy, Louisville on the attack from Bell Patrick. So why is that not reviewable? Considered a judgment call. They've taken a lot of judgment calls out of out of the sport, uh, namely this year with the rule change about double contacts. You know they've legalized. You know, ninety-five percent of double contacts. It's just one less thing where the where the first official has to make a decision. You know, they don't. I mean, the first officials essentially become a you know a, a match a match manager, tempo manager, and moving things along, and, fi and a final decision maker if there's any kind of uh, question about rules interpretation or things. But they they wanted people to stop having to think about whether things are doubles. Well, meanwhile, Cressy on the slide play. No one in the area of this big swing. Yeah, look at Cressy just high again over the top here. SWB audio capture, not registered. 
slide attack is so devastating at this level. Service error for Louisville. Here's Bell Patrick trying to get into a rhythm here with serving. Has an ace already. Cressy blocked out of play. That's not the best look, set location there for Cressy. It's a little bit off the net, so it's a little bit behind her head. She's trying to guide that kind of into the court, ends up using the block from Manguel Duran. Well, we, we talked about Kara Cressy coming in, a decision by Danny Busboom Kelly to provide a bit of a jolt. She did. I'll it say. did seem to work, yes. I'll say. That was missed time for Kong. No. That, so they're looking for a net here. I think we're going to get a challenge from, going to get a challenge from Danny Busboom Kelly looking for a net on that. So the missed connection, that 31 to Kong. It's pretty hard to set the ball too high for PK Kong. That goes way over Kong's hand. And Aisha Carrick, I think, is the one who end up finishing the play. So we're challenging a net at the end of the play. Yep. We're going to take a look at this. Louisville, meanwhile, with Cressy coming in, we talked about that jolt going off of that, hitting 600 we'll get a good in this third at, set. We'll get a good look at it here. So here's the 31. You can see Kong. You, know, you see this, the, vert, the lateral space between Kong and Cabello. Miss, man, that's a, that's a high set. <laughs> and then so, is someone in it? Is this Aisha Carrick? Ball. That's a ball on the tape. There's no net there. SWP no audio capture not in registered. Area. In this area right there. Yep. We just got the call from the official. No net. The point is for G attack. So no net violation. Happens sometimes. You know, ball hits the tape and you can get fooled a little bit. Our R2 there didn't want his moment in the limelight to give us the confirmation on the mic. They're still, I think, I think our officials are still getting used to having to speak, especially once you tell them that they're on the broadcast. <laughs> they, get a little, they get a little freaked out by that. Some of them. It doesn't look like we, is there any theatrical volleyball referees that you know of, kind of like a Ted Valentine in, in basketball? Uh, no. Not anymore. <laughs> Dancing Marvin on the on the beach back in the day, okay. uh, but not not like you get TV Teddy. <laughs> I had an entire conversation one time. I was I was at a I was at a game. I was sitting courtside at a, at a basketball game, and Ted Valentine came over and spent an entire TV timeout <laughs> chatting me up. That's awesome. As a fan. Because I think I said something to him. And he just came over and wanted to have a talk. I'm sure he gets it all the time. Yeah. Dude's jacked. He is jacked. Yeah, he's in great shape. He's a pretty good ref. Yeah, great season as well. SMU with wins over Pitt and Nebraska. They have wins over one and two in the country. Maranato Diaz goes. SWB audio capture not registered. Point right out of the timeout. And lands out. So we're a week away from Selection Sunday. We take a look at the RPI, ACC RPI in the top 50. Really right there. There's your line, Bailey. Now, Virginia did win a set against Louisville. That would have certainly helped if the Cavaliers are having a great season, would have got a win over the Cardinals a few nights ago. Yeah, it's a step, big step forward, I think, for UVA. I mean, Pitt, Louisville, Stanford, I think all three teams good enough to win a championship. Wouldn't be surprised to see all three in the final four this year, depending on matchups. Uh, yeah, a lot of dangerous teams on the back end. North Carolina taking a big step forward. They're making the first tournament in a few years. They should be a lock. I think that 
at the top and through the middle. I think the ACC is the best league in the country this year, better than the Big Ten. I think overall the bottom of the Big Ten is better. It's also four fewer teams. No, wait. How many teams are in the Big Ten now? we got to do the math here. It's definitely not 10. There were, four, yeah. there were 14. There's 18 teams in the Big Ten. 18. Same as the ACC. There's four teams came in. I'd say, I'd say the, the back end of the middle to the bottom of the Big Ten is stronger. And with the additions of UCLA, USC, Oregon, and Washington, that's 18. Yeah. And I, I, the first, you know, the, the LA schools are having decent years, less so UCLA. Um, Washington's having a solid year. Oregon is very good. They're top 15, I believe. But they took an absolute shellacking from Pitt back in September. Well, there's Kong. SWB audio capture, not registered. Miles for PK Kong. That's seven kill, I'm sorry, six kills and 11 swings for PK Kong. Go along with three blocks. Pierce, another block. I see in Bankston. And Bankston in now for Looper. Take a swing. Bounces into the sideline. That's got to be pretty encouraging for Danny Busboom Kelly. Ailey Pierce back on the floor for the Hokies. She's got nine kills leading the way. Interestingly enough, leading the way for all scorers here in this one. Louisville, no one in double digits. As far as kills are concerned. Lena Scott, what an effort. Oh, Cressy. <laughs> I think Cressy needed, needed to go up and get that because that, that very likely would have gone out of bounds on Virginia Tech's side from Scott saying, look, look, at, look at Lena Scott come get this. Hello. And then Cressy just... Gets a little lucky. Sometimes it's nice being 6'6". Six, six. Like right there. Dug out by Mangle Duran, though. Off of the hands of Peterson. That ball was going out. Uh, I think Peterson saw a touch off of Cressy. Uh, that's one that I think she would not. She knows where she is on the court. And she knows she's four feet in from the sidelines. So anything from about your, you know, your, your, your belly button up is out of bounds. So that one she saw a touch. Whether Cressy touched it or not is a question. Freshman Guilfoy serves. Mm. Good one at that. Robbins quickly picking on her, though. A dig. Glock for Bankston. Found some space and took advantage. Yeah, that's a tough assignment for Haley Pierce. On that free ball, perfect pass, of course, from Elena Scott. SWB audio Cressy. capture, not it's registered. So devastating that Jordan Hallman has to stay home on her. Has to. So that's pretty much meaning that Patrick and Pierce are going to be one-on-one -on -one if the set goes left or right. Gigantic difference in hit percentage, 382 for Louisville, 105 for Virginia Tech. And that is the first error for Louisville here in set three. They were hitting 579 before that. Banks and hitting error. Having Maldonado Diaz, who can hit left side in this rotation, is so helpful. She's right there. Cressy. And that just looks a bit unfair. Oh, what a swing from Kara Cressy. Oh my gosh. Look how high she, look at the height on that swing. Just hammering that. It looks like she, you're not gonna set her high enough and then Cabello finds her. I, I, I wouldn't set anybody else if I was Cabello. I just set her every time. Dig from Scott into the scores table. Despite the effort from Louisville. Bill Patrick put a little too much velocity on that for Louisville. Tell young setters if you want to look if you want to look good, set your middles a ton. If you have middles like Louisville does, why would you set anybody else? 
Blocked. Louisville recovers. Able to ran. Tip down. Different level of intensity here in set three from Louisville. I think they were sleepwalking a little bit through. SWB audio captured, not match. registered. Big shift here in set three. You got to attribute a lot of that to Kara Cressy. Starter comes in, immediately produces. Hits 571, gets some blocks. And she just changes, she changes the, the angles for attackers. You, know, she, you talk about basketball, how a shot blocker can alter a shot, even if they don't block it. Same thing in volleyball. A blocker like Kara Cressy or PK Kong, they can come in and really change an attacker's uh, offensive approach because of the space they take up. Oh, he's making 20. So for Virginia Tech, slide here in the season. This could potentially be 12 in a row lost for the Hokies. A couple of winnable matches coming up though. Notre Dame and Syracuse. Crank down, Maldonado Diaz. Very quietly, Maldonado Diaz, 14, 15 attempts now in this match. I think a lot of them have come on the left side in rotation one. It's a good one to go off, you know, to walk off the court with right there. Carrick. Cabello passes back. Maldonado Diaz. Hates passes. Carrick. Peterson off of the block. Daleski for Carrick. Out of play. And match point ensuing for Louisville. SWB audio capture, not Rolls registered. For the Cardinals. And an ace to end it. Louisville jumps out to Eddie Tolle. I'm a phone. I'm a phone. I'm a phone. I'm going to I'm not allowed. 